Hey, Coach. Um, I just kind of wanted to get an overarching feel of what was happening a year ago. I remember being down at, at what was called Sprint Center then now, T-Mobile Center, and you guys played the last game there of the Big 12 tournament. It probably seems like, I don't know, eight years ago, but it's, it's been a year. Can you take me back to that year ago and kind of what that was like getting ready for a game and then not knowing what was coming the next day and just kind of that bit? I, I, I don't think anyone at first knew the severity and obviously we, none of us could have predicted it. You know, you, you know, okay, maybe we're going to shut down, but you know, it's going to be a week, two weeks, then it was going to be Easter and then it was going to be Memorial day. And then, you know, it's just, I don't think anyone understood what uh, the dynamics of, of what the pandemic has done and and how it's affected so many people's lives. Uh, you know, at that time for us, uh, I think it was so unknown. And you know, I, I try to stay informed and watch the news, and I knew a little bit, but and I, but it just it was it was it, it was funny, and we tried to keep the players focused um, on it. Uh, you know, on the game, that was the most important thing. And we end up winning the game. Um, and I, I think I mentioned this last week with the group. You, you know, we went back. We were excited. Uh, you know, we, we had our little little dinner after. You know, it's, it's pretty late at night because we had the, the late game. Um, and then I, we went, we, the coaches, we started watching film and, you know, talking about scouting report and all that stuff. And I went to – I remember going up to my room about 2 a.m. and uh, you know I turned the TV on and saw the stuff with the NBA and and as soon as I uh, saw that the NBA had canceled game and they were sending people back on a bus to Utah, I, I just I knew we were going to be in trouble and I called or texted our coaches and and I said, did you guys see this? But you know, and I said, I it's going to be interesting. We're going to have the game because they told us we were still going to have the games, but no fans. Uh, or limited fans, um, and uh, you know, it just the more you listen, the more you heard, the more you knew it was in doubt. Um, you know, and it just, it just really, I don't know how to explain it. I, you know, just the eerie feeling, the unknown of unknown, and uh, just again, just you know. Then we got a text from uh, Gene Taylor and Casey Scott, our administrators, and said we need to meet coach. And we were in the middle of a scouting meeting with our players. And then they came in and said, hey, you know, we're sorry, but right now it looks like the season's done and, and uh, we got to just keep everyone safe. And, uh, so it, it just, it, it, you know, and, and a year later, we still have issues, obviously, but I, I'm, I'm amazed we made it through the season. Um, you know, in our case, we just tested now uh, this morning. We'll have to test again tomorrow, obviously, and, and Wednesday. But um, you know, we get through that game. We'll have all our games in that that were you know, which I I never thought would happen to be honest. So, um, you know, kudos to our medical staff here on campus, Luke Sauber, Matt Thomason, um, Dr. Goral's done amazing work our, from Lafine, not only with our university but with the with the Big Twelve, and now I think he's even involved with NCAA baseball. So, uh, you know, just a uh, you know, just a it, you know, nothing's still normal, but, you know, to our, our players' credit, our staff, our medical staff, that, you know, we've made it through it. Was there any time in the summer or the fall or, or you know, in the last month or so where you thought you guys, as a sport, wouldn't get to this point and, and be playing, you know, tournament games and, and actually looking like the, the NCAA tournament is going to be good to go? I, I, you know, I, when we came back in the summer, it was so limited, three guys, mass, you know, four guys, whatever, you know, it was, couldn't let anyone in, couldn't really be around them, you know, it's just, you know, we were all just the unknown, you're afraid of unknown, and, and you just, um, you know, even into the fall, but I, I, I really, I didn't, you know, there's been two or three different times I thought, like, our league hit a big, you know, uh, stalemate where we had a bunch of games canceled other leagues have done it um you know I, I i always thought there was a chance that you know that this this might not go through i know the nca they need it to happen i mean we all need it to happen the, the, the schools do the athletic departments need it to happen and 
uh, they've worked very hard to uh, give us a chance. And I just hope the best teams are able to play. You know, that that's the, the you know, that's the part you worry about. Uh, you saw it in the Missouri Valley Tournament. I think it was Northern Iowa had the data positive and had to cancel a game. You know, you just you just hope the best teams are able to move forward, so you have somewhat of a a true tournament that where you got the winner that that should be the winner. Uh, next question to Rob Collins. Hey, Coach Weber. Good morning. Good morning, Rob. What's the last three weeks meant to you and your guys? I mean, you guys have had a crazy season, but uh, really coming on, obviously you talked about how the guys have progressed all season long, but basically the last two to three weeks getting some wins and heading into the tournament, what's it mean for the guys and for you personally? Well, I think it's it, it, for our players. I'm just really, really happy that uh, because all along with all the different things we've dealt with, you know, uh, as a, as a staff, we've had to, continue to, to be there for them, to help them, to be positive. I kept giving them hope. I kept giving, told them they're improving. Um, I, I said, if you keep doing the right things, it's, it, you know, we're going to win some games. And um, I'm just happy they were rewarded for their, their diligence, their, their hard work for, for their, uh, you know, staying focused and, and never quitting. Um, it, it not only helps now for, but it, you know, for the next season to give them a feeling, Hey, if we do these things, we're watching film yesterday. Uh, I mean, our defense was big time on Saturday. I, I mean, we got, we got shot clock possessions. We had, you know, we just, we did it. And it's been like that for, you know, like you said, the last two, three weeks. Uh, so it gives them something to build on. And, you know, it just, you know, you always give people hope. I mean, we're all dealing with it right now. And, the, you know, you're hoping that things are going to open up. You hope the numbers, but you don't know until, you know, we, it, you know, more people get the vaccine. And uh, so it's just the same thing with our team. We, we kept giving them hope, kept giving them love. And then finally, you know, they, they were rewarded and got some wins. And uh, I hope we have a good focus and, and mental state going into, um, into the game we 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 were together yesterday about an hour and a half and just you know hey this this let's do something special here um as we continue to finish the season and reward yourself for your hard work you're gonna have a lot of time off it's been a hard season it's it's been tough on everyone but uh keep coming keep keep battling and hope some some uh, special things happen all right coach thanks good luck wednesday thank you uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, I don't know about you, but it seems like the, the wildest thing about the Big 12 tournament is that Oklahoma is the number seven seed, kind of shows how deep this league is. Is this a kind of show to you how, how wild this tournament could be, how the results could shake out? Yeah, there's no doubt. I, I, I mean, we were talking about Oklahoma yesterday. We were talking about Ohio State in the Big 10. I think they were, if I'm, I might be wrong, but I think they were seventh in the, in the, in the, the ratings last week and they and they have they're 12 and 8 overall um i think it's just the whole country that can you know the things haven't been normal and and uh, you know it's there's there's such great balance our league is really really good i i you know a few years ago when all 10 i really thought at one time all 10 could have been in the the, the uh the ncaa tournament um uh, you know, I, I knew they weren't going to do that, you know, but I think it was the year we had, you know, what, four in the Sweet 16, three in the late Elite Eight. Uh, I think it's it's similar, probably, obviously, the, the depth at the end, probably not quite there, but um, we got a lot of good teams, and we're going to have to do it, but, uh, you know, in, in the tournament, but I really believe, you know, we could have, uh, multiple teams go deep into the tournament. I, our coaching, our, our the talent, uh, the defense, the philosophies. Um, I, I think it's I think it's the best conference. But uh, obviously, we got to back it up in the tournament. Well, what is it about TCU um, in their matchup that always seems to make you guys have such close games with them? Don't know. I guess it's just um, similar styles. Um, 
you know, they, uh, it's, it's just, I, I'm not sure what it is, but I, I think I said it after the game the other day, just you go through the scores recently and, and uh, they've all come down pretty much to the end, even the game at TCU last year, um, it was close. It ended up 11 or some or 10, but it, you know, going under four, it was a, you know, a two possession game. And then they made some free throws and we didn't make plays down the stretch, but um, it, you know, you, you got to anticipate that. Um, hopefully, you know, last year we jumped on them, if you remember, at the tournament. I think we were up 25 to 8. They made their run, um, and then it went back and forth. And it was finally – it was a game where – and last year we, you know, we had so many games where we – it came down to the last four minutes, and we just it – was, it was great for them. You know, Mike made some big plays. Uh, great for our guys to, you know, finally come through. Uh, you know, ironically, then it's the end of the season. But, uh, you know, it very, that game was very similar to the game at TCU this year where, you know, back and forth, back and forth, and then we made the plays at the end. You know, hopefully we can do that again. And I, I know you're not hoping to be in the situation, but if, if something came up where you had to have both Dejuan and Selton on the bench at the same time, who would be the, the next option at the four? Uh, it, it's probably – well, Luke has been playing before. He played a little bit of four the other day. Um, you know, Surrey would, Surrey would probably be the option. Um, depending who they play, we could play big. Um, if they, they got a couple of kind of more power forwards, if they have those guys out there, we could, could try, you know, go big uh, if, if, if that's a, a possible option. Okay. All right. Thanks. Good luck this week. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question to John Kurtz. Yeah, Bruce, I know you've talked a lot about the, the defense and how improved you guys are there. If you were to point out one other thing besides defense that you guys are the, the most better at right now than, than what you were previously in the year? Oh, we're playing way harder. I mean, it's not even close. I don't think they understood how hard they had to play, you know, and, and then um, you had to experience it and the, the level of, you know, the play in the league, um, you know, and, and they've, they've grown with that. And then I really think, and I know we don't score a lot of points because we don't make shots, but I really think we move the ball much better. Um, you know, we have we have some bad, we have some possessions where the ball gets a little, we get the sticky fingers. But uh, I think overall, uh, when we have our the group in there, you know, with Selton having seven assists the other day, um, you know, and, and he even had a couple that led to um, led to free throws. So he had, you know, that. One rule I loved about uh, international FIBA basketball: if you, if they make one free throw, they get an assist. Because a lot of times your best passes lead to, to uh, you know, shots where they foul you underneath or layups, whatever. So, but uh, we we moved the basketball uh, much better than we did uh, early in the season, and, and that that's that's important. I'm looking back on the last time you guys played TCU and getting that win. What was it that worked so well for you guys just in reviewing that and, and what, how can I carry over to, uh, to this matchup? Um, you know, we got to defend like we did. Uh, we got to limit uh, their second chance points when they beat us at our place. If you remember, we they got way down, you know, came back, uh, you know, had it within, I don't know, if it was, uh, at the end it was three. I think another couple times we cut it to two or something. But they had they they made uh, they got those rebounds those second chance points, um, and some of the other guys really hurt us. Uh, if you look at the stats from uh, this this last game, we did a we did not only did a good job on limiting Nimhart and and Miles, um, but we also really limited the other guys. And and that's that's you know when you ask what we've improved, I think that's something that we've done a way better job early in the season. We we're having guys coming off the bench, getting career highs, um, you know, getting 10 when they're averaging two. And, and I think that'll be a key in, in the game also. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks. Yep. Uh, next question to Ryan Black. Hey, Bruce, how are you doing this morning? Very good. Thank you. Well, hey, I, I just want to ask about just how, how much uh, – how much better are the spirits there around just the practice facility and things just with the way you guys ended the season as opposed to 
what it was like in that long slog during the, the losing streak? I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, there's no doubt. It, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, they're just happy that they won. But but I, I, I think you got to give our guys credit. I, you know, and I've said this before, um, and I, I learned a long time ago from my daughter when I, you know, when she was playing uh, little kid soccer, um, you'd be surprised. The, the, the players, they, they have resilience and they come back much better than, than coaches and fans. And, um, you know, it's, uh, they, they just, they move forward. And I, I always talked about my daughter when she was playing soccer and, you know, she'd come home and they hadn't won a game all year and not even scored a goal. But every time she'd come back, she'd say, dad, we're going to win tomorrow. Coach said we're going to win. And I'd be like, I'd just like, okay, I'm, I'm happy you feel good about it. But you got to, to win a game, you got to score a goal. And, um, you know, and then by the end of the year, they, they finally won a game. And, the, you know, the, you know, and as a, as a parent, I would just sit there in agony, just hoping the ball would bounce off somebody's head and go in the, in the net or something uh, to give them a look. But they, they come back much faster than, than, uh, than, as I said, coaches and fans. Uh, but you know, it, there's no doubt. Our you know our guys feel better about themselves. I talked when Rob asked the question. You know, just uh, you know, we gave them hope. We gave them a a vision, and uh, finally that that happened. So uh, now we just you know I hope they they want some more and they want to keep battling into this week. And then Bruce, just uh, if you guys were to, to to go through and and win this whole thing with the tournament and make it. Clinton's NCAA bid. Is there any chance that Antonio would be able to return for the NCAAs? I just have to see what he, how he does health wise, you know, how he's making progress. So um, then we'd see. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big dream, a big goal. Mm -hmm. It's happened, craziness has happened before. I, I joked after the game with Wyatt and Stan, you know, maybe we'll start making every shot. So who knows? You never know. I hope yeah, so for our guys' sake, but. Uh, Right now, we got to get TCU. You can't win it all unless you get TCU. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach, you just mentioned that it, uh, the players being youthful are more resilient. How difficult has this year been for you and your staff? Well, I, I think it's not only the the – you know, just the unknowns. Every day is a challenge. It's just, it's so hard. It, uh, because you just, I just wake up and what text message, what, you know, between the, the COVID, the contact tracing, the, the injuries, um, you know, Luke Saber and uh, Luke were in the training room the other day and they, they called me and um, right before practice and, and Luke goes, coach, I, I got to talk to you. And I, what? And he goes, well, maybe you should come down to the trading room. And, and they said, he said, Luke's sitting here and his foot hurts again. And I like, I, I said a couple cuss words and, um, you know, and, and then they both started laughing and, and he had a little bunion on his foot, but um, they just wanted to just mess with me. And I, I appreciate the joke, but I didn't, you know, at the moment I didn't like it. it and that's how it's been. I mean, it's been all year. I, I just, you just kind of get numb to it, make the best of it. And just, you know, as I said, just keep trying to help the players. That, that's the most, it's about the players and you, you got to give them credit. I, I, you know, they, they, there's, there's obviously they, not in men's side, but there were obviously women's teams that opted out. There's players that have opted out and this has not been an easy season, but they've, they've continued to come every day with a good spirit and, and, and they've made it, uh, they made it easy on us because they, they've been coachable. They have improved. You know, I told them a few weeks ago, I don't want the season to end because I, I, I'm watching their improvement. I think the best could be yet to come. But, uh, you know, that, you know, again, I was – and I felt that way, to be honest, because, uh, you know, practices have been better when we have enough people. The sad thing, even our coach Southwell had to opt out. He's, he's hurt now. So – he can't even help in practice anymore. So we've, we're, we're uh, just, we're just plugging along, trying to, trying to, you know, survive. And hopefully that'll be this week, win and survive and move on. 
You're down to two guys who have played in this arena, an NBA level arena. How good of a opportunity is it for all these young guys and newcomers to experience T-Mobile and, and see what it's like in that kind of house? Well, it's, it's, I think it's great. You know, everything they've gone through, I, I told them this whole year, you know, use this, this, this is, and it's life. Use every opportunity, use every day. Uh, there's so many unknowns, so many things that can happen. And uh, again, use this, this is a special experience to be part of. Obviously it's, it's, you know, we talked about the, you know, Kansas game where you don't have the fans and, you know, the, it's a special atmosphere. The big 12 has always done a great job. With the tournament, the fan support, the, the environment, the atmosphere in Kansas City, um, you know, they're not going to get to experience that, but they are going to get to uh, have the experience of playing and being part of the Big 12 tournament. And uh, hopefully uh, they're excited about it. And we have, a, a, you know, play at a real high level here to finish the season. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach. So we know uh, Antonio and Monty are obviously out. Is there anyone else that will be unavailable for the tournament, as you know now? Uh, not right now. <laughs> I'll wait for calls this afternoon. So we'll see. Um, uh, Carlton still has had some issues. His back, his knee. Um, he actually got in practice last Thursday for the first time since that TCU game. Um, you know, we're, uh, you know, he, he's kind of, uh, I, when uh, Casey went down, I talked to Carlton uh, during that game last week in Surrey and Surrey and, you know, just got to be ready. And, uh, you know, they might, who knows, we, we did stick Carlton in against TCU two weeks ago. Um, you know, one of them might have to step in and, and, and help us uh, and they, you know, make the most of their opportunity. And obviously with, with AG and Monty injured and then, um, it, it does put you make you do small ball a little bit more. So what are the pros and cons? Like, what do you like about small ball? And what, what do you kind of wish you had with your big guys still help? Well, we've done it all year. I mean, this is not something new. I mean, we've, we have, we had Antonio was gone for 21 days. Monty's been gone for a long time. So, um, you know, we've, we've had to deal with it off and on. So at least we've experienced it. I kind of joked the other day that, you know, I've had to, um, you know, redo the offense, revamp the offense. I, I can't tell you how many times during the season, um, you know, because of all the different, you know, guys missing the changes, the injuries, whatever. Um, and, and, you know, so we've been here, we have, we have some packages, small ball, we have some packages, other, other, you know, playing with a little bigger, um, you know, last, last time we, we played them, uh, you know, Antonio was there the first time he was not. So it's just, you know, we, we played small ball in that game and, and we played bigger at times. So uh, I, the big thing is just to, to me is the rebounding. I think that'll be a key, especially in second chance opportunities. But um, we got we got to do a good job getting rebounding, especially in gut check times of the game. Last thing I got, what's the schedule? You, you get down to Kansas City tomorrow, I'm guessing? Yeah, we had to do a, a PCR test this morning. Um, and then we will will practice this afternoon. Um, there's protocols for coming in town. We all got to go to the hotel. We have to test at the hotel before you can go to uh, T-Mobile uh, to to do your shoot around tomorrow afternoon. So we'll do an early practice tomorrow. Get on the bus, go to the hotel. Um, it's the hotel is limited just to the teams, um, and. Uh, you know, isolate after the test and hope everybody's okay. Go shoot, uh, then have our nice dinner and, and uh, you know, do our scouting report like always. We've got a little shoot around. They have a couple of gyms that are designated for shoot arounds on, on Wednesday and then play at 5.30. Thank you, Co. I guess the last thing I, I do want to ask is who's got the scout for TCU uh, this game? Coach Southwell is saying, I mean, you keep your scouts. They, you know, they mm -hmm. divide them up and they keep them. And uh, he had it the first two and he has it this time. Thank you, Coach. Safe travels to Casey. Thank you. Appreciate it.